Hi there, my name is Felipe Turan. I'm an emergency physician at University of Pennsylvania. I am here today on behalf of the Resuscitative T project to walk you through the focus for view protocol that we use commonly in resuscitative uh, TE. I'm today joined by... I'm Dr. Zaiden. I'm also an emergency medicine physician at the University of Pennsylvania. And we're going to first uh, show one, uh, some of the uh, most basic fundamental uh, mechanical movements that allows us to obtain the views in uh, T. As you can see, there's a big wheel and a small wheel. The big wheel is for anteroflexion and retroflexion. The small wheel, which we rarely use, is for lateral flexion. As you can see, when I anteroflex, the tip of my probe extends upward. As I retroflex, the tip of my probe extends downward. Again, those are the, the, the motions we commonly use. With the small wheel, this will move us lateral to the right and to the left. Now that we have uh, explained uh, the fundamental mechanical movements that we have available in um, the performance of TE, um, the last part is the control that allows it to modify the omniplane, that is rotation of the crystals in the tip of this probe um, in a 180 degree um, angle. So the inferior button will control rotation of that omniplane all the way to 180 and the, the button on top will bring back the omniplane back to zero degrees. Omniplane at zero degrees, it's a horizontal position, which is our neutral position. Now that we have covered those fundamental movements, we're going to switch to our Hardworks uh, High Fidelity Simulator to demonstrate the actual development of this uh, four views um, in this protocol. Unfortunately, we cannot uh, simulate the process uh, of probe insertion in this mannequin. Uh, we have a separate video demonstrating the uh, probe insertion procedure. So we're going to assume that we have successfully intubated this patient and we have successfully introduced uh, the probe into the mouth and into the esophagus. Um, as uh, Dr. Satan advances the probe into the esophagus, the first three structures that you see are the brachiocephalic trunk, and as she continues to go down and further advance, she's going to encounter the mid-esophageal uh, view of the aortic arch, um, as you can see in this image, in this long axis view of the, uh, of the aortic arch. As she continues to go down, we're going to find roughly a 30, to, uh, 30, 30 uh, centimeters from the mouth, uh, the mid-esophagus, and find our four chamber view. This is our home base view and the four view protocol. And as you can see here, we have the left atrium, right atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. This is similar to our trans thoracic uh, four chamber view, apical four chamber view. From this view, we're gonna now center the image on the left ventricle. Um, and once we've centered the image on the left ventricle, we're gonna rotate the omniplane uh, by engaging the button on the lateral aspect of the probe the inferior button will allow rotation of the omniplane all the way to 130 degrees, roughly 130. That will develop this nice view where we have the left atrium, the mitral valve, the aortic alpha tract and aortic valve, RVOT, septum, and left ventricle. As you can see, this view is similar to our transthoracic parsonal long view that you're familiar with. This view is uh, commonly used for us during cardiac arrest resuscitation, among other things, to confirm area of maximal compression and establish whether the compressions have been effective uh, by uh, compressing at the level of the left ventricle as opposed to the uh, base of the heart, specifically the LVOT and the ascending aorta. Once we've completed this view, we're going to go back to omniplane zero, or neutral or horizontal position, um, and, and that will bring us back to the four timber view. In order to go to the third view of the protocol, which is our transgastric short axis view, we're going to make sure first that the big wheel is free, that there's no significant anti-flexion um, on the probe, and we're going to advance the probe into the stomach, out of the esophagus, into the stomach. Normally, we need to do a little bit of anti-flexion with that big wheel to reestablish contact uh, with the, of the probe with the wall. And that will develop this short transgastric uh, view at the level of the papillary muscles. As we can see here, we have a nice 
round LV septum and then the right ventricle. As you can see here, this is also a view that you're probably familiar with. It's similar to the transthoracic short axis view and allows us to assess the same things uh, that uh, that other transthoracic view does. Once we've uh, done this view, we're gonna again make sure that we're not uh, anti-flexed and, and uh, once we've done that, we're gonna pull back, we draw the probe back to the mid-esophagus, roughly 30 centimeters, and develop our home base uh, for timber view. Our last view of the protocol is the bicable view, which allows us to assess the right atrium, the IVC, and the SVC. In order to develop the view, it's very important that we first center the um, right atrium right at the center of the screen, as shown here. This is critical in order to obtain the right plane uh, through the right atrium, IVC and SVC. So um, as she has uh, nicely done here, so we'll center the right atrium right at the center of the screen. And now, and only now, we're going to start rotating the optic plane to 90 degrees. Having rotated to 90 degrees, we have now the right atrium, the IVC on the, on the left side of the screen, the SVC on the right side of the screen, the intraatrial septum, and the left atrium on top. This view is commonly used uh, to guide procedures such as the placement and confirmation of uh, guide wire doing ECMO cannulation. The venous guide wire will advance into the right atrium, and that is our, uh, our method of confirmation for patients being put on ECMO doing eCPR uh, in cardiac arrest. Um, additionally, this view allows to assess uh, respiratory variation and collapse of the SVC using M mode, more than 30% collapse predicts flow responsiveness in patients that are mechanically ventilated. From this view, we're gonna go back to our four chamber view. Commonly, what we do at this point is that we'll leave the probe inserted um, at the, with omniplane at zero, uh, showing the four chamber view and this uh, serves as a continuous and dynamic window to the heart that is available to the whole resuscitation team. Uh, we will commonly hang the probe uh, from an IV pole or something else and maintain this image as an additional monitor. Um, and with that, uh, we conclude the uh, demonstration of this uh, four view protocol on behalf of the Resuscitative T project uh, and my colleagues here at uh, University of Pennsylvania, I say goodbye. Where eighty? <laughs> In real life, is actually really easy. <laughs> there you go. So.